today we come to the make or break aspect in choral tone, vowels. I'm often asked what the secret for good choral sound is and the simple answer is it is in the vowels. One must achieve a uniform vowel sound in order to have good choral sound. Of course, our own personal idea of the perfect A, ah, O, or, or E, etc. might vary. But if we don't have uniform, agreed upon vowels in our choir, we will struggle with blend. Voices that stick out either do not adhere to the group's vocal ideal, or their tuning might be suspect. But that is a discussion for another day. So in short, vowels are the golden wings of good tone. But before we sing our circle of life, that is the circle of vowels, let's do some basic primitive sounds again. Okay, so let's make some primitive sounds again. Very relaxed. <coughs> make sure that you're completely balanced and we're just going to go in your own register that is comfortable for you. And down. Now let's do it in fifths just to see if you can tune again. Very well done. Your semitones down were so good I didn't have to stop you for it. <laughs> so sopranos, tenor, sopranos and tenor, and bass and alto. Let's go. Just the R. Oh, it's not an R, oh, it's more like a uh, It's just the naturalest vowel that you can think of, just what comes out. And oh, down. Excellent. We will now sing a circle of different vowels. That is U, O, A, E, I. Or U, O, A, E, I. And we will link these vowels. The secret will be to let the one vowel flow into the other by simply changing the shape of the mouth and not where you place the vowel. Imagine singing all the vowels on one line, or balanced on a rope like a trapeze artist, or in one tube, or in the same spot. Simply put, don't flap the vowels, keep them aligned. Take very good care not to change the pitch. The R vowel has the nasty tendency to drop in pitch, and one must constantly work against that. There is one rule with this exercise. You may top up your breath from time to time. The notes are quite long, but you may not take a breath while changing from the one vowel to the other. When we start, we will be quite slow to change the vowels. But once you get the hang of it, the changes will happen faster. I call this activity the alignment of vowels. It works very well in a bigger group, but it's tough in smaller ensembles, like our quartet in the studio today. We're going to do a vowel circle on one note. Okay. Here we go. U, O, A, E, I. You can breathe. You can breathe whenever you need a breath, but we must take great care when we change the vowels and you may not breathe when we change it. <laughs> okay. <coughs> As always. Yeah. Breathe in and fill it out. Go to O. Okay, yeah, you must take breaths if you need it. I hear the fifth overtone. O. Crescendo a little bit, go to F. N E. Semi tongue down. Very good, go U. Relax a little more. Yes, U. 
Where are you? O. A. First. E. E. And done. Excellent. Fuller, fuller, keep more bottom. O. A. E. E. And done. Yes, that's very good. Listen to that when you get to the R, when the overtone on the fifth comes out. Let's just do one more and make sure that you're aware of that. And yes. Full, full. O. A. E. E. Excellent, just there. Now let's do it in fifths. So soprano and tenor. Basses and alto. Let's do rather faster because otherwise our breath will catch us unawares. And lovely overtones there. One should come back to this at the start of every singing experience. At this stage I need to mention the different registers in the voice. There are three basic registers of importance for choir singers. The first one is the head voice, something like this. La, la, la. Then the middle voice. La, la, la. And then the chest voice. La, la, la. The tendency in modern pop and light music is to overuse or abuse the chest voice, especially in the case of female singers. This register is very strong and it can impress, but it can also damage. If one uses the chest voice for its power, when you naturally should have entered in the not so strong middle voice, you will damage your voice and eventually lose flexibility in that middle register. The result is a breathy tone with obvious unattractive breaks in the middle register where you actually need it the most. One should aim to achieve the same tone color right throughout the whole of the range, through all the registers. There should be no sudden color changes. The following vocal exercises will help to create healthy, connected registers and also instill good vowels. You are encouraged to link the first and the second notes with a scoop or a glissando to iron out the challenges of breaks in the voice. Always stay critical of your intonation, that is your tuning. The following exercise will help you to iron out those breaks that cause you so much problems in singing. So remember when you go to the second note, you must give a little scoop. And you mustn't change gears, you mustn't go to another register. Your tone must be the same from the bottom to the top. <coughs> so we're going to start here. The next one will be O, A, E, E. We're going up, up, up. Maybe I must, can surprise you and put you down somewhere else, <laughs> unexpectedly, so be awake. better because you flimsy down there Ooh, full tone three four
Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, Gabsy. No surprise. You also need to, to grow a little hair on the chest there. <laughs> okay, so now the next exercise. One can change the, the sounds that you make, but basically you must just go and grab that apple from the tree and take it to you. It's almost if you just dive and come back. Let's go zoo up, two, three. Zoo 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 It was okay for the bass, but slightly too low for the soprano. Let's go there. Two, three. Zoo 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 zoo. Careful not to let that top note jump completely out of the frame. Once more, two, three. Give a little more energy. Two, three. You missed the top note. Two, three. You're missing the top note. <laughs> One, two, three. That's it. Next time, we will do some exercises that focus on tuning.